I was starting to feel like this deep calling to just recenter and go deeper and go inward also for the benefit of my content creation, for the benefit of the quality of my music so that it comes from a genuine place of bringing value to people. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. In today's episode, we cover art, creativity, and spirituality, and how all of it is interconnected. This one is a deep one, and I really enjoyed this conversation. Our guest is someone I've been following since 2012 and found inspiration from, as she's an OG online creator. And it's been fascinating to see her evolve over the years. I'm excited to introduce Christina Bazan. Christina Bazan is an entrepreneur, artist, and spiritual seeker, opening gateways of knowledge by bridging music, fashion, and spirituality merged with grace, passion, and beauty to showcase their interconnectedness. Hello, Christina. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Hi, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. I'm good. How are you? I am good. I'm so excited to have you here. I don't know if you realize, maybe I did tell you on Instagram, but like I have been following you since probably 2014 or probably earlier than that, like before Instagram, (laughs) because I remember following your blog way back then. Oh my God. So you're an OG (laughs) as well. (laughs) I think so. Like it was like back in the fashion era. I was really into fashion. Were you on Lookbook? I was. That's how I started. Oh my God. I love those days. I miss those days. That, that was such a good time. Oh my God. Oh I still God. think about it. And I'm like, that was such a good time for content creators. Like it was so yeah. less competitive, less saturated, you know, chronological feed and all of that good stuff. I miss that. <laughs> I know it was so like pure, like, oh, let me just share my outfit and what I think looks pretty. <laughs> So tell us your story as an artist and entrepreneur. Like, how did you get started? And take us through like the evolution throughout the years. Well, I have quite an eclectic story. I was born in Minsk in Belarus. um, And I lived there until the age of four. And then my family relocated to Kentucky in the United States. So whole different culture, whole different set of like values and beliefs, like a whole different way of operating reality. Like Belarus and the United States are honestly polar opposites when it comes to like the mentality and the way of like perceiving reality. So I guess from an early age, I was exposed to kind of like a very open-minded way of perceiving reality. And then at the age of six, my dad got a job in Switzerland. So we relocated to Switzerland in the French part, which is where I grew up most of my life. And um, obviously as a, you know, immigrant kid, I had a really hard time fitting in and constantly adjusting to different cultures, you know, first... America, then Switzerland. Uh, Each time having to learn, you know, a new language was a challenge. Although now I recognize how much of a gift it, it, it was, you know, and it is. But yeah, so in Switzerland, you know, I was once again kind of like exposed to like a cultural shock. Um, although it is kind of like a middle ground between the Eastern and Western like values, I guess. Um, and it was really interesting because that's when I really started developing my love for art and my love for fashion and for creativity. Uh, I remember, um, you know, I was so excited to be back home after school and go online and scroll through MySpace and blogs. It was like the beginning of the blogging digital era. I remember, you know, the just the power that MySpace had at the time and um, YouTube as well. It was the emergence of a lot of like YouTube personalities. And I had such a deep fascination for that space because I felt like that's where my tribe is. Like I couldn't relate to the kids at school. Like I always was really into fashion and makeup and all of that stuff. And in Switzerland, the culture is much more like athletic, all about nature, all of which is beautiful, by the way, like I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of who I am. 
but I also have this like eccentric side to me where I just want to play around and have fun and experiment with makeups and outfits. And so I would spend hours and hours watching runway shows online and buying Vogue with my pocket money and studying all the designers and memorizing their names. And I was just so deeply passionate about it. And I wanted to find a community to talk about it because my friends were not really interested in all those things. And so at the age of like 14, I started a first blog, which was kind of like just for me. It was on Skyblog. And honestly, I had a little community on there. Like it was doing pretty well. (laughs) And then I closed it off and started a new one, a little bit more professional, which was called Kature. Started it in 2011 alongside with a profile on Lookbook where I was posting daily outfits that my boyfriend at the time was shooting because that was also like our mutual like passion. He was super into photography and that's kind of like how we bonded and that's kind of like how everything started, you know, um, out of a love for art and fashion and beauty and photography and Um, I then decided not to go to university and kind of like pursue this career path, not really knowing where it would lead me. So it was a huge risk, especially at the time, um, in 2011, like we didn't know that it could actually become a career path. My, my family was really concerned and worried, (laughs) Yeah, but I don't know. I just really had this like super strong, gut feeling that that is what I meant to do and there's no other option. Um, I also knew that eventually I would be doing music because music had always been a huge part of my life and a huge part of my love for fashion because I always connected fashion and music together. Um, And so I just went along with this dream and kind of like fully chose to believe in it and to give it my 100%. And that's kind of like when everything started. And how old were you when you started? Like, did you even have a vision for what it could be at that point? Or were you just like taking it day by day? I was truly taking it day by day. I had a vision for sure. I knew that I had a a talent for writing. Like I always knew that I was really good at writing and that no matter what, I didn't want to have someone tell me how to write or what to write or how to take my photos. Because obviously I I had considered working for like a magazine um, or working for a fashion brand. Like that was in the back of my head. But I always knew that I couldn't follow like such a specific path that I had to keep my doors open and allow myself to explore different creative pathways. I knew that music would be part of my life. I knew that um, I would be doing something that can't really be put in a box, you know? So I felt like being a content creator would allow me the freedom to experiment and explore and reinvent myself. So there was a vision, but there was also room for flexibility and fluidity and flow. And I'm really glad because I feel like this space, like the content creator space is is evolving every single month and it, you have to be able to adapt um, to stay relevant. You know, um, there's a lot of beauty to that um, because it's always challenging you and you can never take anything for granted, but there's also a, a pressure you know, that you can never like truly fully like, be like, oh, I got this. It's all good. Like, right. Good. <laughs> like you always need to <laughs> You can to never stay. just coast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's take a break for our sponsor. The show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Have you ever stopped to think about how much time you give to yourself compared to the time you give to others? It's easy to get caught up in meeting everyone else's needs, but neglecting your own can lead to overwhelm and burnout. Therapy can give you an outlet to express yourself, your needs, and find more balance in your life. For me, therapy has helped me realize my unhealthy patterns with the pressure I put on myself to meet my own expectations. It helped me reframe my beliefs and negative habits. 
If you're considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And you can always switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash TLL today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash TLL. Yeah. So take us through like all those years and what were the major, I guess, pivots or changes that happened because you're one of those rare people that really have been there since the beginning. Like since, so like this was when content creator and influencer weren't a word, (laughs) you know, they weren't words that we used. All these things are so, so common now, but you, you were, you went through all of it and I noticed like the shifts you made in your career. So take us through that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was a huge challenge, especially in Switzerland, to establish that word. At the beginning, the way that we were introducing ourselves to brands was like, we are digital journalists, we create editorial photography, but we share it online, and it's a way to reach a younger demographic. Um, So I remember, honestly, like leaving certain meetings and crying because, you know, brands really didn't understand it. And obviously we had to eventually think about, you know, earning a revenue. Like when I told my parents that (laughs) I, I wanted to pursue this as a career path instead of going to university, my dad was like, okay, you're going to make a business plan because if within a year, like you can't show us proof of it being, you know, um, sustainable, then what's the point? Um, so I always had this pressure at the back of my mind that, you know, I would need to generate an income. And also because obviously like I wasn't alone, I was working with my partner and we also wanted to hire people. So there was always this interesting dance between business and the creative aspect, which I'm much better at the creative part of, of all of this. So I guess we were stimulated in a way by this pressure, like it was good because it forced us really to get out of our comfort zone and to really believe in ourselves and to to really develop a narrative that was straight to the point and to really understand what we were bringing to the table and our assets and the value that we were bringing to the brands in terms of storytelling and art direction and just overall creative approach. So eventually, you know, our efforts really did pay off. And at the beginning, we did a lot of things, you know, without earning anything just because we were so deeply passionate. And um, eventually we took the decision to move to L.A. because it was obviously like business wise, much more interesting. People in America are much more open-minded about those things compared to Switzerland. So we moved in LA. I wasn't even 21 actually when I moved to my first apartment in LA. And I just remember just like feeling this huge difference in culture and how everyone was open and welcoming and I mean, not to bash on Switzerland. I love Switzerland and that's where I live now and there are so many amazing qualities, but just in terms of like innovation and forward moving, like it's, it's uncomparable. Um, so when I moved to LA, I signed with a talent agency and things started moving really, really fast. I got a really big deal as a brand ambassador with L'Oreal, um, released a book, uh, just did so many amazing things, did a speech at Oxford, was doing every single fashion week, traveling with a lot of like amazing brands. Basically like things were really rolling and it happened honestly pretty fast. So it was great, but at the same time, it's like we were so young and none of us went to business school. So it was quite difficult, honestly, to handle the the business aspect of it um, alongside all of our creative ideas and everything that we wanted to continue doing creatively. So we definitely had a lot of internal challenging challenges between just us as human beings and how we wanted to proceed. Like I remember my my partner and I had a lot of like conflicts around that, obviously because we were a couple. And then we became business partners and then, you know, we broke up and we remained business partners and there were a lot of like human personal dynamics that 
we manage to respect each, like everyone's privacy and not, you know, share all that was going on in the background, but there was a lot. And, you know, we were babies, like we were very, very young. So it was a lot to manage and juggle, but I think we did a really good job. Like it was, um, it was a really, really powerful learning experience on every single level possible. And then eventually after LA, I kind of figured out that I really missed Europe and I missed the European charm. Um, and I was also simultaneously working with a lot of music producers in LA and I decided that just creatively it would make much more sense for me to relocate to um, Europe, maybe pick a city, like a big city where I could have the same creative opportunities as in LA, but also have kind of like this European touch. And so uh, we moved, all of us, the whole k team, the whole K-team, uh, we moved to uh, Paris and I signed with a record label there and I started to really, really focus my kind of like my whole creative direction on music and on expanding kind of like my creative offerings to much more than just, and I'm saying just, but it's already a lot, like blogging is a lot, like it's a full-time thing, but I wanted to offer a more in-depth experience of who I am and of just my writing. Cause I think that once again, like reading an article is beautiful, but experiencing a story through music and sound and visuals and fashion and all of it together is really cool. And that's really what I wanted. So yeah, I lived in Paris for the last five years and just recently moved back to Switzerland. So it's really beautiful because it feels like coming back full circle. And um, I'm beginning... What was your reason for going back to Switzerland? I was about to say, I'm beginning kind of like a new chapter in my life. You know, I feel like I had to kind of like close this giant cycle of like those years that I just shared with you, everything that happened and symbolically coming back to Switzerland is a way to like honor everything and also revisiting my roots and why I started all of this. Like, what is my why? And why do I keep doing this? And why do I want to keep doing this? Because living in big cities like LA or Paris, it can be very overwhelming with a lot of distractions, a lot of stimuli, a lot of information, a lot of people, a lot of just everything. And I was starting to feel like this deep calling to just recenter and go deeper and go inward. Um, also for the benefit of my content creation, for the benefit of the quality of my music so that it comes from a genuine place of bringing value to people, you know? Because for me, music is medicine, art is medicine. And for me to be like a clear vessel of art or divine, because for me, art is divine, you know? So for me to be a clear vessel of the divine, like I need to be in a in a healthy state in a healthy mm. mental state in a healthy yeah. energetical state for my yeah. art to um bring positive energy to people because that is so deeply needed and i feel like that is why people really resonated with my message from the beginning is because the writing the articles the photography it was not just about me yes it, it was me kind of like the um, the face or the character of the stories that we were sharing with the world, but there was a deeper meaning to all of this, which is you can start from absolute scratch and make anything come true. Like you can achieve your wildest dreams, even the ones that seem so crazy and impossible. You can go against the grain and you can make it happen. And I feel like now being back here, being going back to the roots is is me kind of like reconnecting with that part of me again. Wow. I love your story. Thank you for sharing it in that detail. But like what I love about you is like you're so genuine as an artist. And I consider myself like a creative and an artist. So like I recognize like how 
like what you do and how you care about being pure with your art and it guides everything else. Like you're not just like a pretty face or some fashionable girl. You're like so much deeper. And I love that. I guess the next thing I do want to ask you is like, you said you were going back to Switzerland to rediscover your why. So like, do you, what is your why? And what is the thread that kind of connects everything that you do and guides you? I feel like humanity is going through a massive collective shift of beliefs right now, especially right now, especially in the last three years. And we need to use art as medicine to teach people about their essence and who they truly are and the power of their energy. And I think this is how art has always been used. You know, it's always been used to transform pain or suffering or our stories into beauty, into inspiration, into fuel for new. And I know that this is why I'm doing this. And I'm really grateful because in those last three years, I've really reconnected with my spirituality and my relationship with the earth and with nature, which was honestly, which I've kind of like forgotten for a while while, while I was traveling. And, you know, the, the fashion industry is so fast paced. It's all about like hustle culture and performance and all of that stuff, which is honestly amazing and super fun as well but it can be very draining. I was burning myself out constantly. My mental state was not great. Um, My uh, human relationships were also suffering quite a lot, although on the exterior, everything looked so glamorous and glossy. Mm -hmm. And I experienced the same thing in the music industry because essentially like my love for music is also because I think it's so correlated with spirit and with kind of like our experiences beyond the surface of things. And when I started working in in music, I, I realized that this industry is also quite toxic. You know, it can be very rock and roll, like people drink a lot, take drugs. Like it's not a very healthy, holistic environment to be totally honest. I mean, I guess, from my experience. And my why is to bring awareness and well-being and purity, for the lack of a better word, in those environments. Um, Yeah, I guess that would be it. Yeah, I I appreciate that because it is true. Like the industries of fashion and music are seen as so superficial and fast and like it's it's not pure, right? So someone who is an artist trying to bring purity. I I appreciate that. Yeah. Another thing that I really love about you is like you don't like to be put in a box. So tell us more about this approach and this philosophy to life because I, you know, at Lavender we talk about being an artist of life, creating your dream life and it means like you can be whoever you want to be. You can create your life any way that you desire and you're doing exactly that. So how did you I guess get this philosophy and this approach to life and tell us more about it. I love that. I love that. Yes, your life is your greatest piece of art. I think that is such a beautiful message. Beautiful words to live by day by day because when you live this way, even your hardest moments are beautiful. You know, I always think of like people going to the movies to watch, you know, really intense <laughs> really intense movies where people are going through heartbreaks and just the the most terrible like experience as possible but there is a, like a human beauty in all of that like it's not just to create like all of this terrible experience for humanity like i think that there's a purpose to all of this you know it's to forge us into diamonds you know diamonds are born from pressure and I think for me, like it's just trusting my intuition as well and being connected to that inner knowing that there is something greater at works and kind of like dancing with the unknown, which can be so scary at times. I love that. I just feel the how connected you are to like your spirituality. So why don't you take us along that journey? Were you always this way or what's the story? Oh my God. How deep can we go? (laughs) (laughs) Just let it flow. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I don't know if you're into astrology, but I'm like, I am totally into astrology. Very deep. (laughs) Yeah. It's a whole science, you guys, by the way, like it's, Mm -hmm. it's fascinating. Um, I'm not an expert, but 
I have a lot of Scorpio in my chart and oh, I, I see. love going in the depths, like okay. take me deeper, you know? When I was a kid, I was always very much connected with spirit um, and spirit comes from Latin spirare, which means to breathe, breathing, inspiration, the, uh, the power to be kind of like, uh, um, I would say like bathed in the energy of the divine and letting this information flow through you unobstructed. So when I was a kid, I was able to do it very easily, effortlessly. I didn't allow kind of like my my intellect or my mind kind of like interfere with the subtle information that I was experiencing around me. Like when I would go in the forest, I would talk to like fairies or I would really let my imagination run wild and I would never judge it. And then um, growing up, I kind of closed off my channel. You know, I I feel like, especially as a kid, if you have certain spiritual experiences and you see certain things or you hear certain things, you know, be looked at as crazy or weird or something's wrong. Uh, maybe we should see a doctor. Maybe we should bring our kid to a psychiatrist. Like something's off, you know? And so I completely shut it off. And um, it's only recently that I reconnected with my psychic abilities and my spirituality. And it happened in a very serendipitous way, although it wasn't pretty because, you know, when we talk about spirituality, we imagine like crystals and astrology and like smoothie bowls and things like that, <laughs> like the, and feathers and hats and things like this. But um, for me, it was like the dark night of the soul. Like I had a very strong experience in uh, 2019, end of 2019, I was going through a lot of turmoil in my professional and personal life. And I started meditating. I had never meditated before. I had never even truly allowed myself to rest ever since I started my blog because I was really in this like, go, go, go type of mindset, all about performance, all about numbers, which once again, like there's nothing wrong with that. I think that you need to go through those phases. And it was, you know, it, it was good. Like, I think this is why also we got to that level. Um, but it was also sometimes at the detriment of my mental health for sure. So I started meditating and it was almost like opening a closet that was filled with stuff that I was just like sweeping under the carpet and denying or ignoring things connected to, you know, my family or once again, my intuition that I wasn't always listening to. And it just flooded me with information. And I kind of like allowed myself for the first time to really feel it, like to not run away from the level of intensity and emotion that I was going through, because I'm really good at keeping a very straight poker face. I'm like queen at that when underneath there's like, uh, <laughs> like a storm. So I, I let the storm happen, basically. And I think for the first time in many years, my nervous system kind of like relaxed and was like, oh, okay, you're ready now. And blasted me with what I would call spiritual information, just things that I always knew about the universe or energy, but never really like investigated it more, more than that. You know, I always knew that energy was all there is, but the way that I experienced it viscerally in my body is like this electricity that was just shattering all of my limiting beliefs was so powerful. And I really felt like I was one with God, the universe, the divine, whatever you want to call it. Cause I know that it, this is such a like loaded word for some people, but I also realized all the pain that I had connected to that word, you know? And I had so many questions and a lot of anger was coming up like, but if there's a God, why is there so much suffering in the world? And, you know, all of that stuff, um, which I think all of these questions are fair. But um, I think our, our way of approaching divinity is like, we try to personify it like a human being. But for me, it's like this 
infinite ocean of consciousness, which can express itself in so many different forms. And in this ocean of consciousness, everything can exist as a probability, as a possibility of creative expression. And anger is one, suffering is one, pain is one. Like if you are infinite consciousness, wouldn't you want to eventually in your infinity explore what that would be like? You know, so it's it's very tricky. It's very subtle. Um, being here is not easy. I think being human is um, very intense, especially nowadays. I mean, it probably has always been. <laughs> We're very privileged nowadays. We have a lot of like access to you know j- just the internet is like so such an incredible tool. Um, so yeah. I think this is sort of like what happened to me and what opened this spiritual doorway within within me and why I'm so passionate about talking about this topic. Yeah. That's amazing. That's like a like it's it's such a big awakening moment for you, like 2019. So what how did you change your approach to life or your mindset after that experience after like now what you have kind of remembered it seems like you, and you've already like known these things like in past lives you're probably already very like connected to spirituality it's just like you're just remembering now <laughs> right so how are you different now thank you for saying that it's so true and i think that it's true for everyone i think that deep within on a subconscious level we all know that And then there are layers of experiences and trauma that we've all collectively went through, not only us, but also our families, our grandparents, like there are so many layers. And I think in our genetic code, like we carry the story of our families. And this is my personal belief, but I also think that we also carry the stories of all of our past lives or simultaneous lives because at a certain dimensional level, time space doesn't really exist and it's all occurring simultaneously. So it's a very complex and, and fascinating, you know, world. And I think that we owe it to ourselves to get to know ourselves, you know, like we finally have access to resources, books, podcasts, videos, workshops, retreats, like you can educate yourself. My parents grew up in the Soviet Union where so many books were forbidden. Like now you can literally go on Amazon and buy a Joe Dispenza book and understand how your brain works and the importance of creating heart brain coherence. You can buy a channeled work from the Pleiadians. Like there is so much information. It's just a matter of like, first of all, sitting with yourself and really just truly listening to yourself without judging, without criticizing, without being like, oh, I'm just telling myself stories. Well, guess what? Like this whole world is built on stories. Like your computer was someone's story, (laughs) you know? And someone was like, what? You want to build a computer? You want to build an airplane? That's ridiculous. That's just your imagination playing tricks on you, you know? Our everything is a story. And our imagination is so powerful. Our imagination is the source of I don't know, the chair that you're sitting on right now. (laughs) So every single thing, every single thing. And then there's also the power of nature and the, and the wisdom that nature has inherently in itself and just sitting in a forest and letting nature be your teacher and just observing the way it works. And just the fractal geometry that you can see in like a little leaf or flower, it's everywhere. This knowledge is everywhere everywhere and it does not contradict science i love you know um again people like robert edward gran who kind of like makes correlations between spirituality and physics and science and explains in a very clear way how they don't need to cancel each other out guys you know like now is an era of unity and coming together and um creating bonds and links and bridges for people to have access to knowledge that has been suppressed for so long. So yeah, for me, like no matter which field of work you're in, I think it's your, it's our duty collectively to do this work. 
because that is the only way for us to, you know, create a sustainable future. And I think it gives like meaning to why the world's going through everything it's going through, right? It's like we have forgotten <laughs> all of these things that we're, we feel like it's us against them. Like it's like we're detached. We don't remember that we're all the same. And I think people being detached, for, I mean, spirituality, I see more and more people becoming more conscious and aware of it and learning about it, which is really exciting. But at the same time, like the world is so far from, from where it could be, right? If everyone was more aware and conscious. So I guess what would you want to say to the people listening who are, I, I think most people are kind of in the middle. Everyone is aware of spirituality. And I think, like you said, everyone deep down knows it. But what would you say to those people who are still struggling to like believe? Yeah. I would say that you matter. Your voice matters. You think you're not important, but actually we're all influencers, you know? It's not because you don't have like a million followers on Instagram that you're not influencing your community, your family, your friends. You know, I've noticed that um, at the beginning, I was really like scared to talk about this. I had like two or three friends that I could really open up about those topics and really go for it with my most crazy voo stories. And I noticed that the more I gave myself the permission slip to be cringe or ridiculous or sound voo-voo and just like share, I would have people in front of me be like, oh my God, this is really funny that you say that because actually I also experienced something of this nature and I never talked about it. So I think that it's important that people realize how much they matter and how much their stories matter and how much everything that you go through, you sharing your gifts, you sharing your experiences can really allow others to feel safer to open up as well. Yeah, that's so true. It's like you think that you're the only one going through these things or the only one who thinks this way, but other people just, they have a similar story or they also believe the same way, but they don't talk about it because it's just not normal. But the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it. And that's how we progress and evolve. I've seen that across like so many different topics that used to be so weird and so out there, but now everyone's like accepted it because everyone just starts sharing like something like astrology or like even meditation back then was weird, right? People were like, oh, who meditates? But now everyone, everyone is aware of it. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of good to it. You know, a lot of people complain about like the trend that spirituality is because it is a trend. Um, there are a lot of spiritual influencers, a lot of online courses. I think you need to have a healthy level of discernment, a healthy level of skepticism. I think it's important to ask questions because there's a lot out there. Like you really need to know how to navigate, you know, but I think it's good because it allows people to feel less intimidated by it. For so long, you know, we considered spirituality to be either religion or um, becoming a Buddhist monk and isolating yourself on top of a mountain or becoming Mother Teresa and, you know, getting rid of all of your belongings. And that was the only way to be a spiritual being in people's mind, you know. I think that now we are creating a more modern relationship with spirituality as energy. Energy is everywhere, energy is everything. Energy doesn't recognize, you know, skin color or religion or how cool your house is. Like energy is energy and we all have access to it. And um it's not that simple, but it's easy. Like it's something that we can all learn to understand and to work with. You don't need to buy a hundred million books to learn energy work. Like you can just once again go into nature and connect with the river or the tree and just work with your own body, your own breath. Like you can experience a psychedelic experience just by playing with your breath or, mm -hmm. you know, doing mindful body work. Like you are the portal. It's not outside of you. And I think this is something that people really need to understand. Spirituality is not someone telling you what it is. It, it's you experiencing it and it's you fi figuring what it is for you and what your relationship is 
with what your relationship is with the invisible, you know? Um, it's a very personal and unique path. Um, you can have people guide you through this path, um, but you're the one walking it. I love that. You do have a way, way with words. I, I love just like hearing you speak. <laughs> and I, you mentioned how you love writing. So why don't you tell us about your new book, Through the Veils of Mystery? Like, How did you get the idea to write this book? So this book is about the, um, the experience that I've had in 2019, the spiritual awakening that I had. And I really go into details. And I really want it to be, once again, like a permission slip for people to feel validated in certain psychic experiences that they might have been through that they don't dare talking about. For me, it was a very vivid and visceral experience where I felt like, once again, blasted open. I felt like my psychic channel was blasted open. And I had an experience with light beings, which, again, I know it sounds very out there. And I completely respect people being like, what? That's totally fair. Like, I just genuinely just shared like what I went through and how I experienced it. And I don't care whether it was my imagination or not, because I've had so many confirmations after afterwards of meeting people who've had the exact same experience as me that you can't make this What was up. the experience? Like, can you tell us a little bit about it? As I said, I was going through a very intense turmoil. Um, a lot of things in my life were honestly crumbling. Like I was losing people that I really cared about. Like some, some relationships that I really cared for were just not working out. Um, business wise, I was also very confused. Like th there were a lot of things that just made me feel like I was in the pit of a black hole. And funny enough, I always had a fear of black holes. Like <laughs> I couldn't even see a photo of a black hole because it would scare the shit out of me. And that's what I felt. Like I felt like I was in just this infinite darkness. And I think that also the art that I was creating at the time is very reflective of that. Like if you look at my EP and the music I was making at the time, it's very much reflective of that darkness that I was experiencing. And so during meditation, um, I started just saying that I have nothing to lose because I felt like I had lost so much. And I also felt like I couldn't complain that I should always be grateful because I'm so privileged and I'm so blessed. So my nervous system was really struggling because a part of me was like, but I feel like shit, but I feel like I can't say that I feel like shit because I'm so privileged. So I would, my, my brain was like, there was this really intense friction and I just felt so exhausted, so sad, so overwhelmed. And um, I just felt like there was this huge block in my body. And so I remember sleeping for several nights on the floor of my living room. And on the fifth day, I was again meditating and saying this mantra that I have nothing to lose. And something clicked where my nervous system just kind of like relaxed and this friction between the, oh, but I can't complain because look at where I am and look at everything I have. It just kind of like dissipated into a, you're allowed to feel actually like you're allowed to feel. Okay. Like it was very abrupt. Like it was very fierce, like a very fierce energy. And I was like, whoa, okay. And I kind of <laughs> like allowed myself this intensity, like just a vessel, just like a, an instrument. And that's when I felt like this huge surge of electric energy just blasting me from the bottom of my spine to the top of my head. And I felt like certain areas of my body were just like energetically being unclogged. At least that's how I like sensed it. And I started moving in a very weird way. Like, I don't know, I just felt like something was happening, but I couldn't put words to it. And, and I felt like the deepest sense of surrender I've felt in a very long time. And when that happened, I started to see with my eyes closed, like colors and just colors, you know, almost like little clouds of colors. 
And at a certain point, I was so scared. Like I was scared that I might be going crazy. (laughs) Um, I was scared that I might be hearing voices and that there might be something wrong with like there. I was filled with judgment, filled with judgment and also skepticism because again, skepticism is healthy. But in that situation, it was really like creating an enormous amount of tension And I saw sort of like a circle of light um, around me. I didn't see it physically, but I I saw it through, I would say, my third eye. At the Mm -hmm. time, it just felt like I could sense it. But if I had my eyes open, I couldn't obviously see like a clear blue circle around me. But I saw energetically, I sensed energetically that there was a circle of blue light around me and sort of like these long elongated, like blue beams of light. And I felt like I was surrounded by a certain very high level energy. And because my nervous system was in this state of surrender, I heard, you can let go. We're here to help you. And I saw these light beings clearly work on my um, energy channels. And it was really crazy. It was, um, I, I don't know how to describe it with words. Uh, I was crying, moving. I felt like if someone saw me right now, like I would go to the asylum. <laughs> like, truly. How long was that like experience? That experience lasted the whole evening and night. Like I barely oh, slept that night um, oh my God. because I started receiving information about my childhood, about my family, mm-hmm. about my life and what I'm meant to do. And I had to write everything down. So I have like those notebooks that are filled with everything that I wrote that night. And they were like, we're always here with you and you already know us. And yeah. And it's th- the craziest thing about that is that following that experience, I, I had the longest period of integration. Like after that, I had, I felt like I had to relearn how to function in society because I felt like my psychic channel was opened and I really had to learn how to use it. Um, Cause it's not just like, Oh, I'm so spiritual. I have psychic abilities. Like you need to learn how to use it. Cause otherwise you don't even know where you end and another person begins. Like it's, It's all very um, subtle. And I met people that also met blue beings that described Uh them in the exact same way. Also saying that they received downloads of like almost like mathematical information. So, and stuff that I honestly, I couldn't have come up with like... (laughs) usually when I get into creative mood, like it's more like poetry or drawings or photography ideas. It's not really like mathematical equations about the universe, you know? So it was really, and and also I wasn't actively pursuing to become spiritual. Like I, it was not my intention. I already Mm -hmm. had music and I was really happy with pursuing a career as a musician. And I was not at all looking to acquire that sense of spiritual knowledge or whatever. So yeah, I I think uh, for me, even just sharing this, it feels uncomfortable because obviously like I can sense that people watching this would be like, "Mm." (laughs) hmm, you know, but fair enough, fair enough. I just think that it's important that people realize that there is something beyond the visible reality. And I think even animals can sense that. Like my cat sometimes stares at things that, like, I don't know what he's staring at, you know? <laughs> there is so yeah. much. I bet your dog is the same, you know? Animals yeah, are very sensitive. Definitely. And I just want us to, yeah, give ourselves again, like, this permission slip that, hey, like, maybe it's not that crazy. Maybe it's crazy to ignore how we truly feel or to ignore that we are interconnected with dimensional realities that we can't even perceive. Yeah. First of all, that's so fascinating. Like, thank you for sharing because I know that it takes courage to share 
like in the way that you have. So I really appreciate it. I, I love to be open-minded. So like I've heard all sorts of crazy things. I believe, not that I believe everything, but like I accept everything that people tell me because I'm just like, anything is possible. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to refute what you said because I, like I can, like I'm, I'm intuitive in a way where like if I hear someone speak, I can tell if they're being authentic or not. And like that, yeah, with you, you're, comp- I can tell you're being authentic and it's, yeah. So I, I do appreciate that. Cause it's like, basically there's so much beyond what we see and what we believe now. And I think it might be weird now, but maybe 10 years later, it's normal because everybody knows about it now. Right. It's, I, I've seen so many things evolve that I don't know. I, I do appreciate you sharing, especially when you know, there's going to be judgment. Yeah. But I think it's, it's okay. Like, I don't judge the judgment. I accept the judgment. Even in myself, I also have moments where I judge and I've learned to just integrate it and accept it. And that is why, you know, my book is called Through the Veils of Mystery. Like, it's all about lifting the veils of illusion because energy is invisible. You know, you you can't see it, but you can feel it. And this book is all about reconnecting with the power of feeling. And I feel like I have an expertise in that because I've numbed myself out for so many years to the benefit of my career. So it's a very tricky position to be in because I can attest that it works, but to the detriment of my mental health. And that's where the dance gets very subtle. And that's where we all collectively have some questions to ask ourselves in terms of what kind of society are we all collectively building where people need to run on empty and exhaust themselves to be high performance achievers, successful people, you know? Yeah, it it goes deep. Yeah. I, I also appreciate that topic because I'm always dancing between what's balance versus what's like you wanting to work hard and succeed versus like giving yourself what you need and not caring about the external success and the external numbers. What is your approach now to well-being? Like how do you find that sense of balance? Well, I just want to reflect on what you just said, uh, cause I think it's very important. Um, I think right now, collectively, we're going through like a recalibration of our feminine and masculine polarities. And I think the feminine is all about magnetizing. It's more of a surrender energy where we learn to receive. We learn to slow down and go in. And it can feel very dangerous to be in that energy because it's the unknown. And for me, the feminine is the dark womb of nothing. It's the void energy. And we're all scared of the void. Like I said before, I was so scared of that black hole energy. But for me, it's kind of like the this womb, this womb field of infinite possibilities, infinite probabilities. I think connecting with our feminine, which we all have, is allowing ourselves to really feel into what do we truly want instead of letting society or family or friends um, dictate what we should be doing. So just to have this space to really hear ourselves is key. And then it's the marriage with the masculine, which is all about actually acting and doing things. Because you can't just be in the feminine and like slow and flowy and, oh, I'm just letting things come to me, you know? You need to learn how to step in at a certain point and act on your inspirations. Put things into, you know, concrete, tangible form. And I think all of us, even, you know people who identify themselves as women or whatever. Like, I feel like all of us are very comfortable with masculine energy. I think even most women are operating from their masculine energy. I can speak for myself. Like I've operated for, I think, over eight years in my masculine, although I look very feminine and I love all the glam, but that's not the glam is not just that. Like feminine is not just the glam. (laughs) It's not just the fashion. Feminine is trust in, again, the unknown. 
And I think that the masculine is very reassuring in the sense of like, okay, I have the numbers to prove that my business is working. Okay. Like structurally, my business plan is very good. Like, you know, it's those like logical, like kind of like left brain proofs um, that are very straight to the point. And we need both. And it's a very, very nuanced relationship that we all have within us. Um, we are sometimes one takes over the other one. And I think that we always need to monitor those dynamics within ourselves. But it's kind of like the inhale and the exhale. You know, it's it comes naturally. It's meant to come naturally. And it's uh, it's a love story that we all have within ourselves. So I think collectively we all need to like marry and make peace with those polarities instead of like having them be constantly at war with one another. And I also want to note that if you have been operating in your masculine for like a long period of time, and I can relate to that too. Sometimes you're just in like a go, go, go energy, especially as you're building like a new business or something. I think you have to accept and acknowledge that it takes, like you have to like sink back into your feminine for a longer period of time as well. But eventually you do find a sense of balance where you can dance between the two. Because like you have to balance. Like if you were too long in one, you're gonna have to spend a, like a long time in another, right? Have you experienced that personally? Yeah. Well, I think throughout my entire career as a content creator, I have been in my masculine. At the beginning, my style was very feminine, and then towards I would say like when I started my music career, I even started dressing in a more masculine way, like wearing like blazers with super big shoulder pads and I think at that point you can really tell that I'm like super like masculine in my energy and I think that this is also why this spiritual awakening was so crucial to my health is because I couldn't have kept going that way for for longer you know also in terms of the relationships that I was magnetizing in my life I just really felt unsupported um, I always felt like I was the one that had to do everything. Even the guys that I was dating, like I never felt supported or held or, you know, I never felt the strong arm of the masculine, you know, because I was the one embodying that energy. So I, I guess after my uh, spiritual experience, my spiritual awakening or whatever we want to call it, I went kind of like I swing towards like the other extreme of the polarity where all I wanted to do was just like really allow myself the time to process, the time to digest, the time to feel, the time to think, the time to contemplate. And of course, I saw my business being affected by it for sure, for sure. I had a lot of people ask me like, oh, like, what's up with you? Like, why aren't you going to fashion shows anymore? Why aren't you doing this anymore? Why aren't you doing that anymore? And I was taking it personally. I was like, guys, I've been working since I'm 16. Can't you see how like this is also like a beautiful face? Because I always have this like people pleaser thing of like really wanting my community to like be happy. I don't know. It's really strange. So receiving feedback of like, oh, you're not doing enough. Like we want you to post more outfits. We want you to like release new music. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm not enough. I'm not doing enough. But I feel like this is what my body really, really needs. So how do I balance this? And I'm still in the process of like, this is currently what I'm learning. Like this is currently my initiation. <laughs> so I'll tell you when I figure it out, if I ever figure it out. But I just one thing I want to add, and I think it's very important is our society is structured in a way to support women being more masculine because yeah. just the work field like is not meant to even honor the cycles you know, it's like, oh, this isn't your blooming phase. Oh, we don't care. It's time for you to bloom now, like every month, you know, like 
<laughs> you cannot have a winter time of your life. You cannot have like a season of regeneration because there's always something happening. And if you skip a season, you're out. It, it's just the, the reality of this world, especially of fashion industry. If you don't attend certain fashion shows for a season, you're not going to be invited the next one. So it's um, very tricky. And the the really weird paradox of all of this is that everyone is exhausted, but people keep going because it is fun. It is fun. It's really, really um, inspiring and beautiful and glamorous. Also, of course, business-wise, it's very interesting. But to what point, you know? Yeah, to your own detriment of your well well being, right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. A- as a content creator, I experienced this too. Is like I there are times in my life where I had to slow down. I had to do less and I had to just like do nothing for myself to heal, like to go back into the feminine. And then you do start to see like the your success and your business go down. And it's really scary because you've been operating from like that society productivity, you must always be on, always must be like growing, growing, growing. And so I I can relate to what you're talking about. Like, it's not easy to go through that, to like see what you've built start to like trend downwards. But it's also like, I think it's freeing and it's a lesson to be learned to like separate yourself from that. Like Mm. separate yourself from trying to please your audience, separate yourself from trying to like grow all the time because you as a human being, as a soul, you're not meant to just be masculine, productive, growing, growing, growing. That's, it's just not practical. It's not feasible. Like you need the balance of the seasons of your life. You have to honor the yin and the yang. You have to honor times where you have energy, times where you don't have energy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lesson everyone is learning and everyone can learn in their lives because we all go through that. Like society teaches us to be like, always producing, always doing something. But yeah, we're learning that that's not how it should be. We have to balance the masculine and feminine. Totally. And how are you doing it? Because I'm curious to know, like, how are you experiencing that balancing? Do you allow yourself to slow down or do you feel guilty when you do? Of course, there's guilt, especially in the beginning. And then there was a, I think with each, because I go through cycles, I go through cycles of like, oh no, like, I'm, I have energy to work. I'm inspired. Let's work hard. Let's do this. And then I get overwhelmed. And then I'm like, oh my God, I have to like slow down. I have to, you know? So I, I go through these cycles and then the more I go through them, the more I honor the, the seasons and the phases and I don't allow myself to feel guilty. And now I'm at a point where like, if you're on social media, you can get stuck in that like it feels good to post and get that positive feedback, right? And it's it becomes a little addicting. Mm. But I think now I've gotten to a point where mm. I've like detached from it. Like I, my identity is not who I am online. Like I could f- look like a failure online and I'm still okay because I'm happy in my daily life. Like I'm journaling, I'm meditating, I'm playing with my dog, right? Like mm. you have to find value in you, 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 your real version of yourself in the present moment and be able to let go of like whatever you're holding on to, like in your identity or in your career. Um, be, like I said, like you have to be okay with not looking like, like just all that external stuff, right? You can look a certain way to someone else, but you can feel completely different in your daily life. And I think what matters most is how you feel. So I'm I'm not perfect, but I'm I'm learning. Like I have noticed I've gotten better with that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. You know, it's funny in the book, one of the poems is um about perfection and it's about how our struggles, our mistakes are actually perfect. So in that sense we we are perfect, not just as a result but but as an instrument through which a song or a story can come through. So in that sense, you are absolutely perfect. And it's very tricky. And I really resonate with what you just said. And thank you so much for sharing about the whole like people pleasing validation part of it. Because as you said, it is very addictive um, to get sort of like this instant gratification of like, oh my God, like, you're doing good. It's kind of like a pat on the back, you know, like 
you you got this like you're not a total failure in life <laughs> um and i feel like the more we receive it the more we crave it again it's like a drug yeah and so to get out of that loop of like finding your own source of inner validation and living your life from the inward out instead of from the outward in is much more sustainable, much more healthy. Um, but again, like it's a lot of unlearning. And I think that we can understand it theoretically or intellectually, but then to teach it to our bodies, because you know, when you're addicted to a drug or to like a food, whether it's sugar or coffee or whatever it is, to stop the habit is very difficult. The body goes through purging where you literally need a hit. And I think, I mean, for me, from my own experience, I I know it, like my mind knows it and understands it and it makes total sense. But then my body's like, oh my yeah. God, but I need it, you know? I know um, exactly what you mean. Yep. Yeah. So that's where like mindful practices, meditation, breath work, going to nature, switching your phone off, and even sitting with that feeling of that voice I call it like the hungry ghost that's like, <gasps> fill me up, fill me up. You know, it's kind of like this energy and you're just sitting with it and you're like, I see you. You don't need anything. Mm -hmm. You already have everything within. I got you. I'm here with you. You're beautiful. Like whatever it is, like these might sound like generic words, but to each, you know, their personal like inner narrative, I think it's super important to be as honest as possible with ourselves when we do inner work, but it's a tricky one. Th th this, this here, the whole validation, I mean, it's a whole industry. Oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so many industries as well, but I, yeah, I appreciate us bringing it up because it's a huge topic and I think everyone can relate to that. Um, and I also love what you said is like, we have to learn how to live from the inward outward instead of the other way around because so many people go from the outside in. Um, okay. I, I wish I could speak. To, I, I feel like we can continue this conversation for like hours and hours, but I we're, we need to wrap up. So do you have, what what is one message that you want to leave the audience with today? I just want to repeat that you matter. I know it sounds cheesy, but I really mean it. I really mean it. Like no matter who you are listening to this, like you really matter. Like your voice and why you're here really, really matters. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Okay, finally, where can our listeners find you online? Well, on my Instagram, it's at Christina Bazan with a K. Um, you can also check out my website. It's called Kaza Bazan. K A Z A B A Z A N dot com. And my book, Through the Veils of Mystery, is available on Amazon and on shopcatalog.com. Amazing. Thank you so much, Christina. Yay. You are such an amazing, beautiful soul. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so much for inviting me and you too. Likewise, sending so much love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.